Hello everybody and welcome to another Objective Trade video. I am recording this video now for the second time. Uh, unfortunately, yesterday I had a little bit of a snafu with the uh, audio recording and lost most of the content that I made, so I'm trying it over again today. Um, so the subject of today's video is how to use free tools to sort of emulate the Bloomberg experience. And I think it's very important for me to say from the get-go that, you know, using these tools that I'm going to give you is not going to give you something that looks like the Bloomberg terminal or even feels like the Bloomberg terminal. And really that's by design, right? I mean, these are free tools that you can access on the internet and the Bloomberg is something that will cost you $30,000 per year per seat. Um, even on volume discounts, it's going to cost you something like, you know, twenty six, twenty seven thousand dollars $27,000 per seat. So it's definitely by no stretch of the imagination a cheap tool to have. So we're going to talk a little bit about um, some tools that you can use. And these are tools that I use in my own investing. Uh, I no longer have access to Bloomberg, which in full transparency is the reason why I haven't made uh, videos in, in quite a long time. So... Um, before we get into it, let's just talk a little bit about why Bloomberg is so expensive and why it's so useful. And that is because it is really probably the best aggregator of financial data available on the market today. Um, it has the fastest access to information. It has the fastest access to news. And it also has um, a massive network of people and that's sort of two-pronged. Um, on one end, you have the network of Bloomberg employees and contributors that make the platform great. You know, the company operates an entire army of researchers and um, pricing analysts and all sorts of folks who update this, this platform, including Bloomberg intelligence articles, and then they have the news articles. And then it also has the network of people who are the clients, right? So I touched upon this on a past video where you could pretty much access or have access to anyone who's anyone in the world of finance um, through Bloomberg um, by sending them a Bloomberg message or a Bloomberg instant message. And, you know, a lot of multi-million, multi-billion dollar deals are done right over the Bloomberg, which is, you know, it's like the social network of choice for, for people who work in the, the financial industry. Um, and so that's why people find a lot of value in it. And that's why it's so expensive, because there is no better alternative right now. However, you know, if you're an individual investor, if you're a student, if you're somebody who is looking to just up your, your investment game, you don't need the Bloomberg terminal. It is overkill. Um, I wish Bloomberg would release a version that was like 100 bucks or 200 bucks a month. You know, even with delayed pricing, that would be just amazing. Um, but it doesn't look like they're going to do that. So you have to sort of work with what you have. And uh, I don't do as much short-term trading anymore. I'm more of a long-term investor myself. Uh, so I'm going to show you what you can use. And I think the first, the first place you can go is going to sound kind of funny is Yahoo Finance. Um, Yahoo is kind of a company or a relic of the past, but one of the things they do tremendously well is their financial um, website. And if you go to finance.yahoo.com, you'll have pretty good access to what the latest headlines are uh, in the world of finance. And beyond that, you know, you can just punch in a ticker here and we'll just choose Tesla since it's a trending ticker and everyone loves it. Um, and, and you'll have at a glance information and it'll provide you, you know, the bid ask spread and the 52 week range and the volume and when the next, next earnings date is. But the real value for me is when I can come down to look at the financials and they'll give you a pretty decent chunk of time to go back. Um, right now, I see that it goes back to about 2020 and then you can upgrade to get more access uh, or access to additional information. But you'll get things like historical data and analysis and all sorts of really great things. and. You know, I know a lot of great investors who base a lot of their decisions on information they find on Yahoo Finance, not not analyst reports. I'm talking about the research that they do themselves. You know, they don't subscribe to, um, you know, 
Bloomberg or any other platform uh, icon, anything like that. You know, they manage multi-million dollar portfolios for themselves and for their families. Uh, and they're just, you know, getting their information from Yahoo Finance, believe it or not. So it is a really viable tool. And that's um, something I recommend to you highly. If you're somebody who um, likes to screen for stocks or likes to kind of get inspiration from the, the data that's out there, a website I would recommend to you would be Finviz. And I used to use this website a lot. And it looks a little bit different today than it used to. Um, it looks a little bit more modernized. But Finviz is such an amazing tool, particularly for um, screening for stocks. So if you are looking or doing research and you find that you want to screen for a particular, I don't know, a company that's on a certain exchange with a certain market cap that is in a certain industry, um, you can basically punch all of that information right up here and it will retrieve a list of securities that match your, your search which is really useful, right? If you're sort of in the discovery stage, if you're, you're trying to make a move in a particular industry or whatever the case is, um, you'll be able to relatively quickly uh, find a list of stocks that you can then start drilling into and finding information on. So I'll pull up AA, which is of course Alcoa, and we have an ad for SkyRizzy, uh, which is interesting. Uh, and then you'll be presented with a uh, chart here which you can you know blow up and you can take a look at I, some of these features will cost you money um, for charting I do have something for you coming up next but this will give you kind of information at a glance and you can also take a look at some of the analyst reports which is not something I usually do but if you're sort of influenced by analyst opinions then by all means go ahead and uh, take a look at those so Finviz great stock for screening I used to come here a lot to take a look at the maps and just see what, what was going on in the broader market industry. Um, I would probably activate your ad blocker on this website, though, if possible, because the ads are outrageous. Um, they're literally everywhere. Uh, but that that's Finviz. So let's move on to the next one, which is one of my favorites. It's TradingView. And TradingView does offer premium tiers. Uh, however... I find that their their free version is basically enough to get a good idea. And, you know, uh, what I'll do is I will pull up, um, let's just pull up crypto because it we do follow crypto here. So we can see the price of Bitcoin, excuse me, is 68,149. Um, to pull up the charts, you can just basically click that symbol there and you'll get uh, a chart which you can then customize to your preference. Now, I already have some presets here with some Bollinger Bands, and, you know, I don't have them there for any particular reason. I'm just doing that to demonstrate. But, you know, there's some really useful tools in here in terms of you being able to draw support and resistance lines, or you can apply certain channels. So if I come over here, um, I can do a let's do a regression trend and just kind of punch it in from here to here. And you can see it'll kind of draw that out for you. So if you're somebody who's into TA, technical analysis, um, I can see this being a really viable tool for you. Now let's talk about news. Where do I source my news from? So one of the things I really miss about Bloomberg is that you could just go to the news page and you would have sort of a live feed of all of the latest headlines coming through. And if something, if Bloomberg deemed something was important enough, it would flash down at the bottom of the screen, which was like so useful. Um, you're not really going to be able to do that a whole lot here. So the closest thing I found to, to, to that is a website called Coifin. And I've been using Coifin since it, since it came out. And I don't pay for it. I use the free tier. But if you come over here, it is kind of organized like the Bloomberg Terminal in terms of commands and, and functions. So if you go to Market News, which is the, the function is called Top, you'll see what the trending news is. Um, I do not think that it will flash red if a breaking news article comes through. But I do come here every once in a while and just take a look. And it's organized by various categories. 
And so if you come up here and you do, um, I don't know, let's do a sock that everyone talks about, Palantir, pull it up and you get these sub functions. So we can take a look at um, the function here is g.tgt, which is price target. And it will offer you various information. And then if you upgrade, um, you know, you'll get some advanced features. I am not being paid to say that. I'm just pointing it out. Um, but then you can do things like create your portfolios. You can take a look at uh, world equity indices, which the Bloomberg has a function for that as well. And you can see along the left side here, there's just a ton of different options. So if I were you, I would definitely create a Coifin account and you know play around with it. It's going to be very useful. And then one of the um, biggest tools or most prevalent tools that I use is TOS, Thinkorswim. Thinkorswim is a platform that is offered to Charles Schwab customers. You know, it started off as its own thing, uh, became part of TD Ameritrade. And then when Schwab swallowed up TD Ameritrade earlier this year, it sort of became part of that uh, brokerage. And so I don't know if you need an actively funded account to use TOS. Um, I remember you could create an account and just not fund it or put like a dollar in it and use paper money, which is the paper trading version of TOS. And when you log in, you have the option of whether or not you want to, um, if you want to connect to your live account or if you want to connect to a, um, a paper money account, which is where you can just place fake trades and just kind of feel for the software and feel for the market. Um, so I love this platform. I think it's probably the closest thing you're going to get to Bloomberg in terms of, of market information. Um, you can get real time quotes here. You can, you can do, you know, uh, level two bid ask spread the order book. You can take a look at news for particular securities, or you can organize news in such a way that, um, suits your preference and and the charting capabilities of the software are actually um really terrific they're highly customizable and you can see that i kind of just i keep things quite simple um there's not a whole lot here and um, just basically taking a look at the the volume the rsi and just some candle charts so thinkorswim is definitely highly recommended if you're actually you know trading um you can do some a great deal of research on this platform as well. So let's say you've got all your information, you've got your charts, you've got your news, you've got your, your screeners, you've got everything. What about actually doing analysis, um, you know, creating spreadsheets? Do I have any recommendations for that? And if you're looking for something that's, that's free and that's, you know, not going to break the bank, I would highly suggest that you use Google Sheets, honestly. Uh, and the great thing about Google Sheets, let me just see if I can pull that up here. It's basically like a free version of Microsoft Excel. Um, you can pull data in from Google Finance, which is basically like Yahoo Finance, but a little bit different. I don't know if it's a matter of preference. I prefer Yahoo Finance, but um, well, what it'll do is it will be able to pull data directly from Google Finance and you can just import it into your sheet. So for example, if I, I don't know, wanted to pull in pricing data, um, let me set this to currency, I'll type in Tesla. Let's say we want to pull a quote for Tesla. We could do an equals Google Finance, uh, open parenthesis, quote, Tesla, close quote, close parenthesis, and it will pull that pricing information and it will actually update throughout the trading day and there are other parameters that you can do like the day's high the day's low volume things like that as a matter of fact if you do a google search and you say google sheets finance functions so i already have in here um you'll see the various parameters that you can put in and there's a lot so you can build a pretty robust spreadsheet and therefore a model of whatever it is that you're trying to do. So one of the things that I really want to do with the channel moving forward is I do want to regain access to Bloomberg. I don't think I want to pay for it though. So I'm kind of working on seeing if Bloomberg wants to do something with me. I very highly doubt it, but I'm going to try anyway. Um, regardless, I'm always on the search for 
various platforms that are up and coming and that are trying to challenge Bloomberg. So far, nobody's been able to really make a dent in the market share. So I, I, if you know of a tool that I haven't covered yet, by all means, shoot me an email. Um, my email address is in the um, about page of my YouTube. And, you know, I also hope to do some more videos moving forward uh, relating to the equity markets and my thoughts on them for, wh for whatever they're worth. So stick around for some more content and I appreciate you joining me today.